My, how time flies when you're waiting for stuff to dry and building a tiny forge. I filmed, first of all, howdy folks. I filmed the last segment of part two of this build last Thursday. It is now this Friday, so eight days have elapsed. I don't know where they went. They seem to have slipped by greatly unnoticed, unfortunately, but things got hectic. People got busy. Stuff happened. That's all you need to know. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to go ahead. I got my uh, 0.75 pounds or 12 ounces of satinite and my 3.35 fluid ounce or 3.5 ounce in weight, whatever that means, of uh, water. And I'm going to mix it up in a minute and slather another coat on this and I'm not going to bore you with that because this video has already gone way longer than I thought it should have so anyway hopefully you can kind of see uh, I didn't some of this I was waiting for was I was hoping this darker gray would dissipate and become more uh, more like this and I don't even know if you can see that with the flashlight or not. It just seems like the the floor of it's just still got some darker streaks in it. But I'm tired of waiting. It's been by the wood stove. If it's not dry by now, it ain't never going to be. So let me go ahead and mix my stuff up. And I, well, I was going to tell you, I got a couple of three cracks. I, you know, I wouldn't qualify any of them as bad but they will they did appear um, I don't know if you can get this in just the ideal humidity and temperature and airflow to get it to dry without cracks but anytime I've worked with this stuff it seems like it wants to so anyway I'll be back in a minute and show you what uh, looks like with the second coat on well folks that's coat number two on um, in interest of full disclosure, I, I told you in the other video, I ended up running short and had to steal a little bit from P Rob Peter to pay Paul, so to speak. Well, uh, it came real close to that on this one. I think the first, when I measured what I had left in the original bag, which was supposed to give you both coats, I needed 12 ounces and I was, oh... I think I was 10.3 ounces is what I had so I had to steal a little bit from the from the uh, makeup bag so to speak and so and I'm, honestly with this and I don't know if it's just me being dumb or what but I really neither side did I coat the ends again with the second coat I decided it wasn't worth the hassle to mix up more for a couple of reasons. First of all, there's a few cracks and a little voids here and there along this. My thought is when it's time to actually use the propane to cure this, now I've got some little vents. The second reason is I'd like to actually, f either I'm going to fill it in flush. Honestly, what I think I'm probably going to end up doing is putting some kind of angle iron that protects these edges because when I go to stick something in there, I'll just guarantee you at some point I'm going to get distracted and I'll try to stick a piece of metal in the side of that. So to me, I think that'd be a good idea is, like I said, some little strips of angle iron attach up here and then just have them protect that. So let's see, what else do I need to tell you? So it was a little short. Had to rob Peter to pay Paul. Second coat's on. Um... Probably be another day or two, I'm guessing, given the history of this thus far. And I should be back, and we'll put it together and fire it up, and maybe I'll heat something up and beat the heck out of it for you. But, well, I will eventually. I don't know if I'll do it in this, in this particular video or not. But, you know, like I said, it got kind of long. So, anyway, it's 8 o'clock Friday night. I got a rack of ribs waiting for me in the house, and I'm tired, and I will talk to you folks when I film the rest of this. Thank you for watching. Howdy, folks. 
Well, for those of you keeping track at home, it is Tuesday afternoon. I applied the second coat of refractory mortar on Friday afternoon. Saturday, it looked, I thought, dry enough, but I decided to be overly cautious. Sunday, stuff happened, and Monday, stuff continued to happen, so I just didn't get around to it. But anyway, here we are. Everything looks dry. There is some eh, there's some cracking that formed in the second coat too. So it's a good thing I still have some left, but I think at this point it's time to fire it up and really dry it out. And then we'll uh we'll worry about any repairs after that. So this this part is going to be really complicated. We have to slide the air choke onto the burner tube. We have to lower the burner tube into the forge tube. And the burner tube needs to not, it, it needs to be three quarters of an inch back from the bottom edge of the, uh, the entry tube, they're calling it. C diagram. So, hopefully that's visible enough. <coughs> And then we uh, make sure the ball valve is closed, connect the hose fitting to the ball valve and propane source. And there's actually a four step which is insert the fire brick, but that's only done after the rigidizer, uh, the rigidizer and refractory are cured. So, I kind of cheated a little bit, got everything set. This is your, this is the choke tube, and the thumb screw is tight. There we go. What this does, as you slide this back and forth, this controls the amount of air and it controls your fuel air mixture for your burn. So, tighten that down a little bit. I also cheated a little bit. I inserted it until it was flush with the bottom of the entry tube, pulled it back out. Well, I made a mark, then I pulled it back out and measured down three quarters of an inch and so, let's see. Good and snug. I'm going to connect the hose and stuff like that off camera because it'll be boring. I am definitely going to leak test with soapy water because it's in the shop. And uh, I'll bring you back for, the, for the, uh, the initial light up. The next steps are basically going to be boring as all get out because it's run it 45 seconds, let cool for 5 minutes. Run it for 50 seconds, let cool for 5 minutes. Run it for 55 seconds, etc, etc, until there's no steam showing. So, <clears throat> I'd mentioned this before about the cracks and my hope that the steam would come out. Well, I actually, I got a little proactive. I had a little bit of a void on the other side at the bottom. And I thought, well, if there is any moisture trapped in the blanket under all this stuff, the only places it has to go are either out towards the metal and out little holes and cracks like this or up this way and, and pop the refractory. So I'm hoping, and again this is off label, so do this or don't as you see fit, but it just seemed to make sense to me that it will take the path of least resistance. So if there is any moisture still in that blanket, it should come out this way and then hopefully, like I said, I've got an outlet or inlet on the bottom, on the back, and then one on the front here at the top. So, I'll be right back. Alright folks, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Instructions say, make sure the ball valve is in the on position and the choke is all the way down and not obstructing the burner's air intake holes. Make sure the regulator is turned all the way to the left. On all the way down, no obstruction. Light a long match or flammable material and set it inside the forge under the burner's burner tube opening and then open the propane tank slowly to fully on 
Then open up the regulator by turning it clockwise. The burner should fire up. Adjust the regulator to achieve the desired flame. You're looking for a blue flame. Well, honestly, with these uh, drying burns, you're probably not going to get a blue flame. Uh, basically, what we're doing is we're going 45 seconds and then shutting it off. And you keep doing that until if there's any steam, it stops steaming. I think I said that, but never hurts to repeat yourself. So, anyway... Let's make some noise. Okay, and here's another thing. I have no idea how loud this is going to be on the audio portion. So, this is your warning. If you're wearing headphones or buds or whatever, or you've got your volume cranked, you might want to be real handy with the volume control, because this may sound like a jet engine. I don't know. These are very loud, but I don't know how that's going to translate onto the camera. So, Hopefully didn't blow, up, blow out anybody's ears with that, but you can see just a little bit down here. I don't see any coming out of the hole there, but anyway, now it's five minutes to cool, and then 50 seconds, and then etc. etc. So I'll bring you guys back when that all's done. Well, folks, we made it. We finally dragged her across the finish line and got this sucker done. Oh, boy. Uh, this took a lot longer than I thought it would, uh, mostly because of drying issues and or procrastination and just getting busy. So, obviously, I don't know what the total, you know, elapsed time I have into building this. It's not terrible. Um... I've got a few thoughts for you, and at the very end of the video, I have a teaser for the first project that will be coming out of the forge, so you'll actually get me get to see me uh, beat on some hot metal. Uh, apologies, though, I got my redneck make-do piece of crane rail track anvil out because it was the most convenient. And my big one is buried, and my two travel ones are accessible, but the stand that they go on has got a two-cylinder Wisconsin engine on it, and I just didn't eat my Wheaties today, so sorry, folks. I'll get, a real, I'll get my reel set up out next time, hopefully, and you can see, you know, with the real anvil and all that. But anyway, there's a little video at the end of me beating metal, so... Hopefully you'll stick around for that, but I've got some notes here. I'm going to go through as quick as I can. Some of this stuff I covered. Anybody that has any questions, leave a comment, and I'll do my best to answer. Um, looks like everything's checked off, but with Burner, talk about natural versus forced air and fuel saving and heat difference. Uh, forced air, they use a small air air fan, and 
you can use less fuel and you'll get a hotter temperature um, with a bit more control. Supposedly this thing's a fuel hog according to a couple of the videos. I'll I'll let you know. I don't know that that's the case but I'll I'll fill one of our cylinders so I know exactly how much I got to start with and I'll keep track of it as I go so um, I'll let you know how many hours I get out of a 20 pound propane tank. Uh, let's see. Okay, I contacted this company, Mr. Volcano, and amazingly enough, they got back to me, which kudos to them. In fact, very quickly. Uh, I mentioned in an earlier segment that I thought that the brick that came with it was identical to one you could get at Tractor Supply. Um, not according to them. The ones at Tractor Supply are designed for wood stoves and they're good for 2,000 degrees. The one that's supplied with it, they're saying, is good up to 2,700 degrees. Um, same with, you can fairly easily find refractory cement. Most of that, I believe, is rated to 2,000 to 2,200. What they said their sat night was good for was up to 3,200 degrees. And looking on Amazon, I only found a couple offers for those for that high attempt. And it was, I think it was a hundred, it was like $99 for a 22 pound bucket in the one case. So given that and given the, you know, I looked at the refractory wool, you can buy that on Amazon. I found the, the regulators. The regulator, I mean, this one has a six foot hose on. Most of them I saw were five foot hoses. And you're looking at 20 to $30. Um, one upgrade I saw was I, I found one that had a longer hose and it was actually a, a mesh metal covering on it. Maybe I'll look at upgrading it at some point. That thing is fine. It at no time got hot at all. Had no issues like that. And I don't, honestly, unless you left it out all, all the time, I, I don't see an issue with it. Uh, let's see. They actually sell the Rigidizer. You can get a 16 ounce container for $16.49. The stainless steel, uh, I'm going to just kind of throw this out because I couldn't actually find a piece that matched what this is exactly. I'm going to say you're looking at about 50 to 60 bucks. Now that's Amazon. It, well, and actually, again, they didn't exactly have one. You're going to have to go to a metal shop and I have no idea what that's going to be, but stainless steel sheet is not cheap. Uh, the ceramic blanket, you know, again, there the problem was I found a lot of 12 by 24 inch pieces. I don't think 24 will do that. Um, I think you'll end up with two seams. Now that may not be an issue. With the 12 though, that body is nine and a half inch deep, so now you've got to make a long cut in the ceramic blanket, which exposes you to more issues with the ceramic fiber. Um, so honestly, yeah, you can get all the stuff. I think I threw out a stupid number. I said, oh, you could, you know, you're going to spend a couple hundred bucks. Well, that was way out of left field, and I should have just not said it because it was way overpriced. But you're going to search, you're going to hunt, and you're going to—I believe you're still going to end up paying more and that's then you're going to have to provide your own container for your forge you're going to have to provide the body now it's not a big deal you know an old 20 pound propane cylinder makes a pretty nice little forge you know so and if you can find one for cheap or free that may be something to look at you know build your own instead of this and i didn't even actually price out because i couldn't figure out where to find them was the the little valve well, it's a brass valve. I'm guessing that's got to be, honestly, that's probably an eight or ten dollar valve, if not more. And I may be kind of on the low side on that because it's for propane. But anyway, I would say you'd be hard pressed to assemble all this um, for anything less, unless you're getting a heck of a discount on stuff. Um, they also, I found the, the, the Volcano company sells 
their brand of satinite in a four and a half pound bag for two, no, $22 for four and a half pounds. So I went ahead and ordered that too because I was running low. Uh, anyway, uh, I kind of, I'm not sure what happened with that. I guess I was putting it on too thick in spots or something, but I did get some cracking. I ended up having to go through quite a few heat and cool cycles. So you're lucky I'm nice and didn't bring you along for all those because it took a while. Um, but I got it to the point where I'd run it for about 10 minutes and saw no sign of any steam and thought, you know what, I'm throwing that brick in there and I'm going to beat something up. So that's what I did. But, um, you know, Pro doesn't need electricity to run, whereas a forced air one, obviously, you need electricity. The spot welds, you know... I, Everything looks good so far. You know, stainless, I don't know if stainless steel contracts and expands more than normal, you know, like, say, uh, cold pressed or cold rolled steel or mild steel, whatever you want to call it. But I know it's trickier to weld, and so that's maybe the issue. Um, stainless is a funny beast as far as welding. you got to know what you're doing. I again everything's holding up fine I'll let you know and you know if six months down the road I'm having to re-weld everything or, or uh, bolt it back together I'll let you know but yeah this forge was uh, was bought the company has not provided me anything this is just a random YouTube review of this because I needed a little forge and I thought it was kind of a cool project so I hope you guys did too one other thing I thought of is, you know, the safety aspect. Honestly, you should use this in a well-ventilated area. I'm inside of a shop. Well, I'm also burning a wood stove that draws air through voluminous cracks I've got around the big front slider door. Plus, this place wasn't built by the premier pole, burn, pole barn builders of Michigan. I can guarantee you that. So, I don't feel I would have a problem. I'm also not going to run this thing for, you know, hours and hours on end, I, I doubt. And if I did, you know, again, I'll crack the, go open the door once in a while if I thought it was a problem. But I, this is me saying this, you do what makes you feel good. If you're good, you know, if you're worried about that, I want you to do your own research is what I'm getting at. Don't listen to what I'm saying. I believe for me, it's fine. I don't want anybody to get hurt because I'm an idiot. So, anyway, uh, this went longer than I was hoping it would, but hopefully you gained some knowledge out of this and enjoyed the experience. And I really do appreciate you watching. And thanks for being here.
is a bit of a tease for an upcoming project you will see upcomingly. Hopefully not longly, shortly, maybe mediumly. We'll see, or you'll see. in there it kind of kind of shrinks that area down that's why I'm worried about especially with something like this hitting this uh, bonking it into the ends there busting the fracture 